Welcome to the video of our paper, Simple Cues Lead to a Strong Multi-Object Tracker. For a long time, tracking by detection was the default paradigm for online multi-object tracking, where detections were generated first using some off-the-shelf detector, and then the detections were associated over the frames using the tracking algorithm. In recent years, end-to-end -end trainable trackers entered the field. They di directly take in the whole frame and predict the bounding boxes from this whole frame. They achieve state-of-the-art performance, but they require a high amount of training data as well as complex training strategies. We state that tracking by detection is highly general and still shows state-of-the-art performance if we follow key observations obtained by in-depth analysis of simple cues. We start from a simple online tracking algorithm, where in time step zero we initialize tracks by detections and then update the initial tracks given the detections frame by frame in an online manner. Our tracking algorithm uses appearance cost as well as motion cost that we both, both spice up with our in-depth analysis. Our appearance cost is based on a simple ResNet50 CNN and the motion cost is based on a simple linear motion model. We combine both queues and then obtain our final cost, which we use in our bipartite matching to match the tracks to the detections. For the appearance model, we have several observations. The first observation is that we have different challenges while matching active and inactive tracks based on appearance cues. Active tracks are those tracks that got a detection assigned to in the last time step, while inactive tracks are those tracks that did not get a detection assigned to in the last time step, meaning that inactive tracks belong to an ID that is currently, for example, occluded. In the visualization, we can see that the lady in the blue jacket behind the lady in the purple jacket gets occluded over time. And we see that in the last appearance of the inactive track, her visual appearance cues are very similar from the first appearance of the lady after the detection. Compared to the lady in the purple jacket, we see that her appearance features are very similar over the whole time. To analyze this deeper, we generate appearance distance histograms. Those appearance distance histograms visualize the histograms of the cosine distance between active tracks and new detections of the same and different class in dark green and light green. And in dark blue and light blue, we visualize the cosine distances between inactive tracks and detections of the same and different classes. We can see that the histogram of the inactive tracks and detection of the same classes is very widespread, while the distance histogram of the active tracks and detections of the same class is very centered. Therefore, we use two different um, appearance distance computations. The distance histograms are generated by using a simple cosine distance between the last detection of the track, no matter of active or inactive, and the new detections. We still also use this in our model for the active tracks. However, for the inactive tracks, we use a different approach. We compute a proxy feature distance that takes into account all detections in the tr inactive track and takes the mean of the distance between the detections in the track and a new detection. By this, we can get a more sharp appearance distance histogram also for inactive tracks and detections of the same class. Our second observation is that despite now the appearance distance histogram of inactive tra tracks and detections of the same class is more sharp, it still differs significantly from the appearance distance histogram of the active tracks and the same class. Therefore, we propose to use different matching thresholds in our bipartite matching. We do this by first associating all detections to all tracks, no matter active or inactive, and then we threshold the matchings afterwards, taking an inactive and an active threshold tau. Our second observation is that 
given different MOD sequences, the image statistics are highly different. This means our ResNet50 model has to adapt to very different scenarios. We train our ResNet50 model on a person reID da dataset, namely Market1501, and then we ask it to adapt to all the different scenarios. To make it easier for our model, we introduce an on-the-fly domain adaptation where we use frame-wise batch statistics for the batch normalization layers, meaning that, for example, if we have d-detections, we compute the mean and the standard deviation of the batch norm layers taking those d-detections into account. Our observations lead to a performance increase in HOTA of up to 2.4 points and an ID of 1 of up to 3.1 points, showing that our appearance model is better suited for multi-object tracking. For our motion model, we observe that a linear motion model already performs very well for multiple object tracking and it complements appearance very well. We can see that in the first plot, the linear motion model performs better than the appearance model, especially in low visibility scenarios. However, we can observe that in moving camera sequences, the appearance model performs better than the motion model also in low visibility scenarios. To adapt our linear motion model to better to moving camera sequences as well as extreme motion, we use an adaptive number of frames for the velocity computation. This means that we take the last k frames into, into account for estimating the velocity. This means Depending on the underlying scenario, we take the last k bounding box positions of a given track, compute the velocity from this, forward propagate the bounding box to the current frame, and then finally compute the intersection over union between the forward propagated predicted bounding boxes and the detections. Overall, this gives our good old Hungarian simple tracker, or GHOST, where the order of the letters of the acronym does not change the product, with a different handling of active and inactive tracks, a linear motion model that is spiced up, and our domain adaptation that is applied on the fly in the CNN. We achieve state-of-the-art performance on highly different datasets without even training on training data. Thank you a lot for your attention and if you have any questions, reach out to us in the chat or via email.